New this week on DVD, a fizzling superhero, a bumbling zookeeper, some horrible bosses, and one of the most exhilarating and amazing movies of the 21st century. Why don't you kill each other's bosses? I was expecting a lot more than I got from Horrible Bosses. It seemed like a darker guy version update of 9 to 5. And it starred Jason Bateman, Jason Sudeikis, and Charlie Day as the oppressed employees, and Kevin Spacey, Colin Farrell, and Jennifer Aniston as bosses so horrible they should be killed. But the bosses are kind of one-dimensional cartoon characters, and it's really hard to feel for the annoying, squeaky voice Day when he's fending off Aniston's sexual advances. Wah! Can we stop? doing this thing here. Why? Because you have a girlfriend. Well, she's not just my girlfriend anymore. We're engaged now. What? You want a great movie about a horrible boss? You should check out Spacey and Swimming with Sharks. Kevin James has carved out a nice movie career as a likable schlub in some pretty funny comedies. Zookeeper ain't one of them. I hate talking animal movies featuring live action creatures moving their mouths with the help of CGI. It's probably some sort of Mr. Ed complex. I always hated that stupid talking horse. Griffin, we need to talk. <laughs> Here we get animals voiced by everyone from Adam Sandler to Nick Nolte to Sylvester Stallone to Cher, if you can believe it. Too bad the familiar voices don't make the hokey humor any funnier. Now, perhaps even more fantastic than the notion of talking animals is the idea that Kevin James's ex would be Leslie Bibb and his possible new love interest is Rosario Dawson. Nice option. Who's this guy drunk dialing Victoria's Secret models? Zookeeper fails as a romantic comedy and as a kid's movie. From the ridiculous to the sublime, also available today is The Tree of Life. I'm not going to pretend this is the kind of movie you just pop in the DVD player and watch while you're munching on popcorn. It's a challenge. It's a journey. It's also a visual poem and an awe-inspiring examination of faith and the universe. Director Terrence Malick and his cinematographer Emmanuel Lubeski have created a stunning visual film with echoes of Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Brad Pitt gives one of the most powerful performances of his career. He plays a stern father of three boys in a small Texas town in the 1950s. Don't do like I do. Promise me that. Jessica Chastain is luminous and lovely as their angelic mother. Occasionally, we flash forward to present day with Sean Penn playing one of the brothers now middle-aged and successful, but still mourning a tragedy from his childhood. This is a film that embraces evolution and faith, science and spirituality. You will never forget it. And coming out on October 14th is Green Lantern. Unfortunately, this turned out to be the worst superhero movie of the year. We're told Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, and Peter Sarsgaard all went to school together. Huh? Hello? Age difference, anyone? That's just the first of many, 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 many problems with this all-too-familiar origin story, which plays like a third-rate version of much better superhero movies. To infinity and beyond. From the ridiculously overblown exposition about the galactic community of peacekeepers to the silly costume worn by Reynolds to the mediocre special effects to the punchless screenplay, Green Lantern plays like an expensive, endless Saturday morning TV show splattered on the big screen. It's one of the crummiest movies of 2011. Well, that's all for this week. See you again soon.